We're hearing from the family of a Houston area teenager in the fight for her life, hospitalized after a serious car crash. This baby has had her skull have to be reattached. Just two months ago, she was clinging on to life, bleeding internally. Lacey has a long journey, a 17-year-old who we don't know if she's going to walk again. Best friend's mom had a seizure behind the wheel. She tried to gain control of the car. Instead, it rolled over and she was thrown out. One of my grandchildren's grandmother came and told me, hey, I've been trying to call you. There's been an accident. And I was like, what? What's going on? Thinking about my granddaughter, but then she says Lacey was in an accident. And they had to life flight her to the hospital. Never really thought of seeing someone in that position, let alone my sister. And so it was like, you know, a lot to like comprehend and a lot to like handle and take in. Like I've never had to see anybody like this and it was just crazy. I, was, I didn't know what to feel and it was very emotional. I was very emotional. And I noticed we wasn't slowing down. I noticed a stoplight at the bottom of the hill. We wasn't slowing down and I looked over and she was just but she was zoned out. I grabbed the steering wheel, I pulled it over, we hit a car, we jerked again. We was going towards the medium. And before we hit it, my best friend pulled the emergency brake, but her foot was on the gas, so we hit it. It flipped. Every time the car flipped, it landed on my side. It hit the ground on my side. Her head was decapitated. They told me that her back was broken in four places. They told me that her side was paralyzed. They gave me a list of things that I was like, oh my God. And they still didn't know whether or not if she knew anything because she wasn't giving them no kind of reaction because she was in the coma. But I called my pastor. When they told me I was paralyzed on my left side, I was like, man. Never gonna be back to my altar. I hated it. I I went through a lot, like with my within myself, not even the injuries, more so a mental thing. Like I had to rebuild myself. I asked them why why they didn't let the doctors just let me die. Why I was still alive? She's not going to want to be paralyzed, cause then she would have to be stationed to one place. She's not gonna want these things. The financial burden that's been put a place on us because she still goes to therapy three times a week. She still needs different things for her uh, condition. When I saw my sisters, like when I saw them, it's like I gotta do this. Like, you know, I gotta get better. I knew that she needed the contact of her sisters. I knew even when she was in the ICU, they were too young to be in there, but I snuck them in there because I knew she needed them. She needed to have that connection to build herself, to will herself to be better, to want to fight. Because yes, she had some days to where she wanted to give up. She amazed us to let us know her mind is intact. She was signing to us. She couldn't talk, but she was signing what she wanted to say to us. And that just, I was like, it's nothing wrong with her. She's going to be okay. So when I got to tear, when I got to the rehabilitation center, hey, I, I never got to walk. I couldn't even talk at the time, couldn't move my left arm. I wasn't worried about any of that. Hey, I got to walk. And one day I did that, and then I got tired of my leg being bent. I just kicked it out. And when that happened, I knew I was going to walk again. I was like, oh yeah, I got it. I did that. A couple weeks later, I started back talking. And then after that, stuff just started falling in place. I go to school to get a, to master in, in social working. And I'm going to talk to juveniles and foster kids and stuff. Life's too short to hold grudges to react and not think cause that can get you your life ended too. It's more to life than what you think.